Beside me is the all new 2021 Kia K5. Now the K5 replaces the outgoing Optima as Kia's midsize family sedan designed to take on the Honda Accord and the Toyota Camry. And here's everything you need to know from front to back. Visually, the new K5 is a pretty handsome looking beast, at least in my opinion. Compared to the outgoing Optima, it's two inches longer and about an inch lower, giving a really stretched out, luxurious looking appearance. Under the hood, the standard engine is a 1.6 liter turbocharged inline four cylinder that produces 180 horsepower and 195 pound feet of torque. It's paired to an eight speed automatic transmission. Now, front wheel drive is standard, though all wheel drive isn't available extra, something not featured in a contemporary Accord or Camry. Inside this GT Line K5, you could almost call this cabin Audi esque. Perhaps Audi light is a good way to describe what I'm looking at right here. Now there is certainly quite a lot of black in here and it can feel quite dark at first, but it is punctuated nicely by all this silver trim and the fact there are a lot of different types of materials you're interacting with here. One thing I really like in particular are these speaker grills in the door. It's so interesting the way they've lined up this panel. It just looks very, very upscale and there are a lot of nice little touches like that which is pretty impressive for this vehicle because it only costs 28 grand as tested. A lot of the features you see on this $28,000 GT line are actually features equipped on the standard $24,000 base model K5, which I find quite impressive. Take for example, this eight inch infotainment display. It may look a little bit basic, but it is very intuitive and very easy to use. Also, it's worth noting that again, as standard, the K5 has wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, which is a very cool feature because if you're anything like me, I forget my cable all the time. So having it done wirelessly is just such a nice thing to have. This GT line trim also does have one notable option on it, which is something you should definitely tick the box for. And that is the premium package, which costs 1600 bucks and gives you this large panoramic roof as well as wireless charging down here for your phone and the super cool LED projector headlights up front, among other goodies. Now being a mid-sized sedan, the K5 has ample room for carrying four very much grown adults. I have the driver's seat in my seating position. I am six foot one and just look how much knee room I have back here. Also worth noting, very cool. The seat has little cutouts for even more knee room right here. Headroom, likewise, is totally fine, even with the large sunroof, which can sometimes compromise headroom. Oh, and did I mention the fast chargers? Because this car has you covered for charging. If you couldn't already tell, Kia is very savvy when it comes to tech and devices, hence the standard wireless CarPlay and Android Auto, the wireless charging for the premium pack, and again, there's just chargers for every single occupant in this car. Two USB fast chargers up here, two USB fast chargers up there along with the 12 volt, Pretty much anyone in this car on a road trip can have their device totally covered. The K5's long sloping roof line isn't just for style points. It also means the trunk is absolutely cavernous. I'm pretty sure my first studio apartment was smaller than this. Check this out. See ya. There's a little headroom even in here. Wow, that's pretty comfy. It's even better insulated than my first studio apartment. On the road, and the Kia K5, like every vehicle, has some pros and cons to it. Now, I do like the performance of the 1.6 liter turbocharged four cylinder engine. I mean, it just produces nice down low torque, which kind of gives you that feeling of pull when you lean on the accelerator pedal. However, I think the eight speed automatic transmission is kind of a miss when you compare it to what you get in the Honda Accord, for example. It can be, I don't wanna say jerky because that would be rude or a bit uncalled for, but it's not necessarily the smoothest unit, especially at low speeds. 
Now, even though this GT Line model rolls on optional 18 inch wheels, the ride is still very, very compliant. Though I will say when push comes to shove, it seems like perhaps the shock absorbers in this car are not quite as cushy as the units you'd find on the Honda Accord. It doesn't have that sort of same um, suppleness about it. It's totally fine, but if you drive the Accord and you drive this, it might feel like a slight step backwards in terms of refinement. Next up is fuel economy. Now the EPA rates this front wheel drive K5 at 27 mpg freeway, 37 mpg freeway, and 31 mpg combined. And it would seem that on the open road, you set cruise control at around 70 miles an hour and back off, let it do its own thing. It would absolutely do 37 miles to the gallon. It does seem like quite a fuel sipper on the open road. However, around town, as is the case with a lot of these modern downsized turbocharged engines, the K5 can be a bit thirsty at these lower speeds because you're kind of inadvertently always in boost. In fact, I reset the trip computer, I was kind of watching the MPG, just driving, you know, low speed around town, running errands, things like that, and I was barely managing 23 miles to the gallon. Overall, after a week behind the wheel, I've averaged exactly 26 miles per gallon, which is below the EPA estimates, but fair given how much kind of low speed errand running type driving I've been doing with this vehicle. The K5 features a lot of various driving assist and safety aids, all of which have ridiculous acronyms that you'll never remember. But the most important ones you're gonna notice day in and day out are the lane departure warning and the lane keep assist system, as well as the radar guided cruise control. So as the name implies, the lane departure warning is a system that sees the lanes in front of you and beeps to remind you if it thinks you're going off course or gonna go off the road. However, in my experience, it seems to be a bit over eager to remind you. Even if you're even close to just breathing to the edge of the lane, it beeps incessantly. Fortunately, you can turn it off with a little button over here. The good news, however, is that features like the radar guided cruise control and the steering assist are very nice. Now, it's not a fully autonomous driving experience. It should not be treated as such, but it's just a nice driving aid. If you get a little bit tired behind the wheel, it'll help catch your mistakes, at least most of the time. Much like you can get a V6 engine in the Toyota Camry or a larger two liter turbocharged four cylinder in the Accord Sport, you can also opt for a larger engine in the K5 with the forthcoming K5 GT. Now at the time of shooting this, the GT model is not out yet, but I do know for a fact it has a larger 2.5 liter turbocharged engine, as well as bigger brakes and sportier suspension and things like that. So if the K5 does appeal on a surface level, but you need a little bit more sportiness in it, check out the K5 GT. In the meantime, I think for most people, this mid-level K5 GT line with this kind of, you know, sporting flair, it has the cooler bumpers and the 18-inch wheels, in this case, the cool LED headlights, I think it'll do a lot for a lot of people. It can be extremely fuel efficient. It looks really good. It fits a lot of people in it, front and back. I mean, and I think the tech is something that really helps the Kia stand out because again, as silly as it sounds, the inclusion of wireless CarPlay and wireless Android Auto as standard, even on the basic car, is just a really nice convenience feature. And it's sort of one of those things where once I give this car back, I'm gonna be really spoiled and disappointed with pretty much every other car I get. Because if, if they even offer wireless CarPlay in other vehicles, it's usually a standalone option. It's usually very expensive or reserved for the highest trim levels. So it's very cool to see Kit implementing more advanced tech even on the standard car. It's cool that you can go buy a $24,000 K5 that has these features in it. As it stands, if you're interested in the K5, this model is pretty much how I would spec it up. The GT line being kind of the middle of the road model has a lot of niceties in it. It has this sort of synthetic faux leather. I like the interior, I like the tech in it. And the optional premium package that this vehicle has, you know, gives you the big roof and wireless charging and the cool LED headlights and the ability to do complete stop and go traffic autonomously with the radar guided cruise control, which is pretty nice. And for a 28 grand as tested, you know, it's hard to find faults here. While it may not have the dynamic edge of the Honda Accord or the brawny available V6 in a Camry, the K5 does its own thing and it feels 
neatly modern. It's quiet, it's comfortable, and it has a lot of cool tech features out of the box that young people and newer buyers definitely want in their vehicles, which absolutely makes it a competitive option and one worth checking out if you're looking at a vehicle in this segment. I mean, you're doing yourself a disservice if you look at a Honda Accord or a Camry and you don't compare with the K5. Oh, 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 oh,